Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be going over everything you need to know in order to calibrate your vehicle for the best possible results at your next competition. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to increase the traction of our vehicle's wheels. And the reason that we're doing this is because sometimes when you're testing your vehicle and you're using a significant amount of power, the wheels of your vehicle may sometimes slip or your vehicle may sometimes skid. And again, by increasing the traction of your wheels, you could actually prevent, uh, you can actually prevent your vehicle from slipping and skidding. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get the wheels. They don't have to be detached. You can do it while it's attached. You're going to need the four balloons and you're going to need some scissors. And essentially what we are going to do is we are going to cut out a section of the balloon, one for each wheel we want to put the balloon on. And then we're just going to, just like with the wheel treads, we're just going to put the little sliver of balloon we cut out on top of that. So what I'm doing is I'm folding this balloon in half and I'm just going to cut off the ends of the balloon with some scissors, like so. So one end of the balloon off and then I'm going to cut the other end off. And after you get everything cut, you should get a little ring of balloon. It should be fully attached. There should be, um, and then you, after you get that done, you just have to, just like with the wheel treads again, you just have to stretch that balloon over the outer edge of your wheel. And now what we are going to do is we are going to make a dial for our wheels. And what this dial is going to do is that it's going to allow us to be more precise with our counting of rotations and also make sure that we can calibrate our rotations to get to a specific distance. If you're using an oscillation brake, then you only need a wheel dial for your drive axle, which again is the axle that is connected to the elastic source. If you are using a wing nut braking mechanism, then I would highly recommend you also put a dial onto the axle with the wing nut braking mechanism. Also, the dial that we will be using can be found in the link in the description below. You All you simply have to do is print out the dowel from any printer. It doesn't have to be any special type of paper, just any type of paper will do. Alternatively, if you do not have a printer, you can just simply draw the circle uh, by hand. And this circle that for the dial that we're using is a circle that's just divided into 24 even parts. And the reason that it is divided into 24 parts is that the diameter of the circle is roughly 20 to, is roughly 20 centimeters. So every increment of the dial should be just about one centimeter. So again, if you rotate your axle about one twenty-fourths of a rotation, then that should mean that your vehicle would move one centimeter forward. So to make the dial, what you're going to need is you're going to need some scissors. You're also going to need the piece of paper with the dial on it, or you could have a hand-drawn one. And you're also going to need a wheel. And again, the wheel does, does not have to be Detached. If you, if it is attached, then all you need is you need the need to find the inside diameter of your wheel. And again, if you, if your wheel is detached, all you have to do is place your wheel over it, draw a circle uh, around your wheel. And if you don't have it, all you have to do is find the diameter of your wheel. 
which should be either 70 if you're using the making a dial for the big wheel or 60 millimeters if you're using it for the smaller wheel and all you have to do is mark 60 or 70 millimeters onto that dial on each of the 24 spokes like so. So I'm taking a ruler and marking that and if you do not have your wheel, if your wheel is detached, then again all you have to do is push, place your wheel over the center of the dial and then draw a circle around it. after you do that, what we are going to do is we're going to number, place a number on each of the lines of the dial from 0 to 23, right? So 0 will indicate that you've made a full rotation and each of the other numbers will indicate a number out of 24. So for example, if you had the wheel and the top number, let's say uh, your wheel was set at 24. Or excuse me, 20, 23, right? So that would mean you've made 23 out of 24th of a rotation. So again, I'm just placing a number on each of the dial lines and I'm marking it from 0 to 23. At this point, you can either laminate your page, or if you do not have a laminating machine, all you need to do is get some clear masking tape, or, excuse me, not clear masking, clear packing tape, or clear scotch tape. And what we're going to do is we're just going to layer a bunch of that tape on top of our dial. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow our dial to become more sturdy and then allow us to securely attach this dial to our wheel without the paper sort of crumbling or becoming soaked or anything like that. And after we get all of that tape on there, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the wheel dial and then we're also going to use a razor blade, exacto knife, anything really. And then we're going to cut out a roughly between a quarter inch and an eighth of an inch, uh, eighth of an inch large hole in the center. And that's going to allow our wheel to fit onto our Excuse me, allow the dial to fit onto our wheel. After you get that wheel dial cut, all you want to do is just glue that wheel dial to your wheel. And you can use super glue or any other type of adhesive. And with that, you should be able to properly and accurately measure how far your vehicle is going to go, adjust your braking mechanism, so on and so forth. All right, so just a quick demo on how to use the dial. Here, I'm just going to make five rotations and then I'm going to put a random dial setting for my vehicle. In this case, I've made it at 12 out of 24. So what this means is that, uh, since I'm using it on the drive axle, my vehicle will be powered by this elastic source for five rotations plus 12 out of 24 of a rotation. So you can really see how accurate and precise you could be with how much your vehicle is being powered by the elastic source. And this is fundamental 
if you're using the oscillation braking mechanism because your entire run uh, and where your vehicle stops is only dependent on how many rotations you put on your drive axle. So this is going to allow you to, again, become more precise and accurate on how far your vehicle is actually powered by your elastic source. All right, so I just wanted to briefly talk about the uh, the way the oscillation braking mechanism works just before we continue with the video. And the way the oscillation braking mechanism works is you have a, the drive string permanently attached to your drive axle. So if you rotate your axle, your drive axle, one full rotation, then your vehicle will only travel one full rotation. And if you, let's say you go 50 rotations, right? and your vehicle will travel to 50 rotations, and then it will surpass 50 rotations. It'll go beyond that 50 rotation mark because there is nothing stopping your vehicle from going forward. However, because that drive string is permanently attached to your drive axle, it will rewrap itself automatically around your back axle, and that will start to slow your vehicle down as it goes forward. And then it will get to a point where your vehicle will completely stop and then start reversing back towards the target point. And this is solely dependent on the amount of the amount your the distance your vehicle travels is solely dependent on the amount of initial rotations you place onto your drive axle. So that's why it's very important that you at least try to use some sort of dial or some other mechanism to allow you to effectively count the amount of rotations you're placing onto your drive axle. All right, and just briefly for the wing out braking mechanism, this is not the wheeled champions kit, but it, it is the same concept. So you just want to make sure you have the two hex nuts spaced decently far apart. And just like with the, uh, uh, with the uh, oscillation braking mechanism, uh, the distance your vehicle travels is going to be dependent on the amount of rotations you put onto your brake axle. So if you put more rotations on your vehicle, uh, more rotations of the wing nut that is further away from the spring, then your vehicle will travel further. If you put less, your vehicle will travel shorter. So that's how you calibrate your distances. You just want to make sure you're counting the rotations and uh, if you put more rotation, your vehicle will travel further. Less rotation, your vehicle will travel uh, a shorter distance. So one issue that you may encounter while testing your vehicle is that when you do a full powered run, you may notice that your drive string that was initially taut is not as tight and is actually loose. And the reason that this occurs is because your string is slipping from the elastic while it is uh, during the run or while it's taut and being pulled. So the way you solve this is by either making your knots tighter or by applying super glue to the areas where your fishing line is attached to the uh, latex tubing. And when you're if you're using super glue, uh, then please do not use any form of accelerator when you do so. The chemical reaction of the accelerator may burn the uh, elastic material and then that may just destroy the connection altogether. So again, if you want to prevent your string from fishing line from getting loose uh, after each run, then what you want to do is just apply a little bit of super glue and uh, make sure that you do not use any accelerator during that process. So now what we are going to do is we are going to make an aiming mechanism that can help you make your runs more consistent and help actually correct some errors that you may encounter during your competition. And to do so, we're going to need two paper clips from the metal parts bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend the paper clips so that it has a right angle uh, and makes a, a really long L. So what I'm doing is I'm expanding this paper clip and making the long 
part of this L uh, as straight as possible. And then what we're going to do is we are going to glue this uh, paper clip, one paper clip to the front pivot piece and one paper clip to the back piece. And we want to make sure that these two paper clip pieces are, uh, these two paper clip pieces are on the same side of the vehicle. So here I am, I'm, I'm just making sure that everything's straight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it. So after I have all of my L's made, I'm just going to pre-align it so I know that it's going to fit properly. And then once I know it's going to fit properly, I'm just going to take some super glue, take, take, take some accelerator, and then I'm going to make sure it's securely attached to the one to the back piece and one to the front pivot piece. Alright, so after I get those attached, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the paper clips are perfectly straight. And uh, and because these are paper clips, you can just use your fingers and then uh, move them around so that they are perpendicular to the ground. They're not at a weird angle or anything like that. Now what you also will need to make is an aiming block. And here is an example. I just used a piece of foam board and then some scrap piece of foam. You can also use cardboard, some scrap material, literally anything. And what I did is I drew a, per a line that is perpendicular to the ground and I put a couple pieces of colored tape so that if I'm looking, trying to aim my vehicle to, again, 11 meters, it might be very difficult for me to see this thin black line. So I just have these colored pieces of tape to help me see. And uh, I also have a left and right on my aiming block. So for example, if I'm testing uh, my vehicle and in my practice log I say I set my aiming block at 10 centimeters to the right. So I would move, I would make sure I have an L and an R so I know which direction is right to reduce any confusion. So again, so that would be 10 centimeters to the right. This may be 10 centimeters to the left. So I just put that there just so there's no confusion during the competition. So now what we're going to do is we are going to adjust the steering of our vehicle so that we know it's traveling as straight as possible. And the way you want to calibrate this is you want to find somewhere you can just roll your vehicle. It doesn't have to be super far. It can just be a short distance. And what we're going to do is we're going to line up this vehicle with a, a straight line. So we can actually tell if this vehicle is moving straight or not. And what we're going to do is just put a couple of rotations, maybe like 10, 5 to 10 rotations on your drive axle, and then let it run. And here I'll show you a run where my vehicle is not traveling straight. The way that you actually fix that is that you take a screwdriver and you loosen the 
two pivot pieces. So again, my vehicle traveled to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these two bolts and I'm going to twist my axle into the direction opposite of the way it was turning. So I'm loosening these two pieces and then I'm going to twist my axle to the left because my vehicle turned to the right. And I'm just going to twist it a little bit and after I get to a position that I like or think is going to work, I'm going to tighten it again. And then I'm going to repeat this process again to make sure my vehicle is traveling straight. If your vehicle is traveling straight, then you should have a run that looks something like this. It doesn't have to go perfectly straight, but you want it to be at least decently straight. To calibrate the aiming of your vehicle, what you're going to want to do is just place your uh, place your aiming block at the center, the target point of each of one of the uh, distances, target distances, and you're going to repeat this process for each target distance. And then what we are going to do is we're just going to place our vehicle at this target point. The target point I'm using here isn't a full exact distance, it's just for demonstration purposes only. So what I'm going to do is just place my vehicle onto the target point, making sure that my dowel is on the target point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down on the ground and I'm going to make sure that I'm, uh, if, I, if I look directly at this back paper clip, I'm going to make sure that the front paper clip and the back paper clip are collinear, so they're in the same line, and that it's also uh, is also perfectly centered with the thin black line. If you can't see a thin black line from where you're testing it at, then aim for the colored, uh, colored pieces of tape that are just outside. So if you have it aimed properly, it should look something like this. You're looking through both of the two pieces of paper clip, and it should be in line with the inning block. So if you run your vehicle and you get something like this, where it has the correct distance, but it's offset to the right or left. The way you solve this is that you measure your distance of your vehicle to the right. So let's say for example, my vehicle in this situation traveled 10 centimeters to the right off of the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I'm testing my vehicle again for the same distance, I'm going to move my target block 10 centimeters to the left. And that should accommodate for my vehicle traveling 10 centimeters to the right. 